Thanks for coming. My name is Seth. What's yours? Hello, Jamal is here. Hey, everybody. Uh, you might notice that Stoney's not here. We don't. <laughs> we kicked him out of the show. Oh wait, Stoney got a DUI, and so he was unable to record with us this week. So uh, if you can just send your thoughts and prayers and uh, cash app and Venmos to us so we can bail him out, that would be great. <laughs> yes, allegedly he's in a cell somewhere where I'm letting him sit for leaving me alone with these dogs. Yeah, because you know how like when you put your dog in the kennel because it's like being annoying? Mm-hmm. It's like that with Stony. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, wow. We're back, back, back again. And we're not talking about RuPaul's Drag Race this week. That's uh, so weird. Yeah, it's um, an off-season episode. We haven't had one of those in quite a while. We haven't. I am really excited because we have a special guest and a a special topic for you all this week. We have uh, 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 one half of the Twitter verified Friday the 13th podcast. Ooh. A member of the Dread Central Podcast Network with such creators as the Boulay Brothers. <laughs> Bitch, he's from Chicago. <laughs> Let's welcome to the show Andrew from Friday 13. Hello. Hey, hey girl. <laughs> welcome to the show. Happy to be here. Long time listener, first time talker. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I can't yes. believe we haven't had Friday or anyone off of the show, either of you, on already. <laughs> Yeah, it just gets busy. Everyone, it's, and with you guys and like all the different time zones and everything, it's like, ugh. Scheduling. Oh, yeah, just definitely. when we were trying to schedule this, I was like, kept screwing up the uh, CST, EST. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yes also i feel like we should just say um that we miss maddie and he's having the time of his life uh in england or or somewhere in the united kingdom <laughs> wherever he is these days <laughs> it's wherever he may be we know he's having the most fun this weekend so uh next time we hope that he'll be here with us and uh he's not forgotten basically absolutely i think he was just like on a boat yesterday so don't give him any slack <laughs> oh yeah what the hell he was on a boat yeah F you, Maddie. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So we're here together. Well, you know, Friday the 13th, they are a a horror podcast, horror in real life and horror in the movies uh, or in uh, media, I believe is the correct term. And uh, so we, of course, you know, it's fall now. And we thought, like, who should we have on to do a fall podcast with? And of course, our buddies at Friday the 13th, we had to have them on. Yeah, we appreciate it. Absolutely. Definitely. So we have a few topics, of course, to get through today. But of course, you know, we are RuPaul's Drag Race podcast. So and and we have a RuPaul's Drag Race fan here with Andrew. We just wanted to have a little bit of a conversation to start off the show about RuPaul's Drag Race. I, I just wanted to start off our conversation by asking you, Andrew, do you have a favorite drag queen of all time? Oh, gosh, that's tough. Um, of, I, I think the ones that uh, have just stuck with me are the ones that like, are my favorites. I mean, right now, I'm I, I'm really loving Jan just because I, I, I mean, we've talked about it offline, but um, oh, or, yeah. uh, I guess it's online, whatever, um, that she like, yeah. <laughs> just gets like the shit end of the stick like all the time. <laughs> but um, I appreciate the energy and I appreciate that in a queen. But um, the ones that I really love are probably like I... They're controversial, especially now, but like Shangela was one of my favorites. And then um, I always like Alyssa mm, Edwards yeah. just oh, because yeah. she's such a bitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I like living in her fantasy. I'm hoping that show comes back on Netflix. I don't know if it is or not. Oh, yeah. The dance. What was it? Dance Dancing Queens. Queens. Dancing Queens. Yeah. Have you guys seen like the uh, the Twitter hashtag that Jan started? I think it was this week sometime called. It's like something like the Jan catwalk challenge or something runway challenge or something like that no but it's basically just like everyone walking like down the runway mean like totally like <laughs> looking upset like how she did no when but she I, came I, back I am for going to now on All-Stars. <laughs> yeah 
It's really funny. <laughs> I love that Jan is like able to embrace that instead of being like, I wasn't mad. Yeah. Like, why does everyone think mm-hmm. I'm always mad? You yeah, know, absolutely. it helps being able to laugh at yourself. Definitely. Um, so on that topic, what did you think of All Star 6? Were you happy with the winner? Yeah, actually, I was like, um, I think that I was kind of in the same boat as you guys. I really wasn't. I wasn't gonna be mad no matter who won out of those four. But like the one has HBO money, so doesn't need uh, as much. Right. right. <laughs> and then as soon as they did the last um, lip sync for your life and uh, Kylie did that trip into a flip, I was like, well, she just won with that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've heard from people in I've heard from people out in West Hollywood that like Kylie is like the sweetest person and like the nicest person. So I mean, I'm really happy for for her and um that she was able to pull it off because I don't think anyone going into the season thought her she was a threat. Oh yeah, no, not at all. I totally agree with that. And um it's also nice to hear that she is really sweet because of course, you know, people out there question oh, is she just turning this on for TV? <laughs> uh, the people confirm this is who Kylie is, so that's great to hear. Yeah, it was nice. I, I do like. I, I always have like a little bit of a special place in my heart for Ginger, just because like mm. she, she always goes so far and then like loses it at the end, and I feel bad. But yeah, <laughs> it's it's just one. I think I think it, like, Ginger has a great personality, and we've never really had like a woman of of size or a queen of size that really has won the whole thing. So I was kind of pulling yeah. for her a little bit, but I think she kind of dropped the ball in the last couple episodes so yeah but i mean like also i mean i love ginger too but also the bitch won like fifty thousand dollars that's true <laughs> <laughs> so it's like kind of hard to feel bad for her not winning that's very very true <laughs> i i always thought that um oh gosh i can't remember i'm blanking on names right now this is what i do by the way my brain goes away as soon as the microphone turns I on feel you. <laughs> but yeah, there's we been, so understand. Yeah, there's been other, um, you know, queens of size that I thought were going to go a lot further, and they've brought back a couple of times to see if they could go, but it just never happens for some reason. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying that RuPaul's like shaming anybody or doing anything on purpose. It's just kind of how the 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 bricks have fallen at this point. Yeah. Um, the only the only one that I will say is I feel like it was a little bit of a service was um all, the last All Stars where we had a two winners. Yeah, that felt. Um, eh, let's just say, <laughs> yeah, let's just say yeah. it felt like there was uh, an all white winner's circle, and with yeah. that, I think it's great. I think everyone deserves it. That's in the finals, but yeah. like, couldn't we have just had a winner? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right it's always so weird too because it's like yeah. all star six but there's like seven people in there <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i saw some people on twitter saying oh do you think there's gonna be an all-star season of all the winners <laughs> i'm like first of all there's only seven. Second of all <laughs> yeah not an all-stars second of all they've already won all-stars why would they come back yeah they're already making that coin why <laughs> right <laughs> And also with the yeah. double crowning, it's like the first queen of color to win, and she has to share it with this like Reddit troll, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, allegedly, it's yeah. really unfortunate because so I I liked Trinity like the first couple times around, and yes. then she's just devolved into this like wretched creature, and I'm just like, what it's, happened to you? It's so weird. Yeah, we we just tried to get her on the show actually just to have like a reasonable conversation with her. Um, Because she just, like, randomly responded to one of our tweets because she searches her name on Twitter. Yeah. (laughs) Not because she was added. (laughs) Yeah, we don't add the girls. (laughs) So I was like, well, why don't you come on the show? Let's talk about the tea. And then she just ignored us. And I was like, okay, cool. (laughs) Now, speaking of drag queens and um, kind of the fall spooky season, do you are you guys um, Boulay Brothers Dragula fans, too? Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so funny you said that because this morning we were upstairs watching TV and we were watching the um, Dragula meet the queens for the season and um, kind of like their announcing of the queens reel that they did and we're going to start following it. Yeah. I've watched all of the seasons. We've watched all the seasons. Yeah, I've, well, I've watched all the seasons except for Resurrection because they put it on Shudder. Yeah. And I don't have Shudder. Oh, same. Um, because in the past it's been on well first it was on youtube then it was on uh, amazon i think the first two then amazon was season two yeah and i think amazon kept fucking it up like the releases each week for them so they're like we're out yeah (laughs) yes they did 
but um but yeah so then after they, they took it to shutter and i don't have sh- the ability to watch shutter so i'm like i've been contemplating like signing up for it just so i can watch like resurrection and to. then get into the new season yeah we're going to and it's like five dollars a month it's like nothing mm-hmm. but um that's not too bad i can see yeah. if i can get I... you a code i might have some contacts over there Ooh. But... If you do, I mean, even if even if it's a code that benefits you, we'd be happy to like sign up using your yeah. code. I'll see what I can do because we like we talk about them all the time. Like we're huge Shutter fans, and so yeah, oh yeah. Um, and you know, we had the Boulay brothers on. God, that was like a year ago now. It's insane. Oh yeah. Um, I've pretty much a lot lost like a year and a half of my life at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're definitely subscribing because we want to watch Resurrection in the new season. Resurrection was a lot of fun because you got to like know them, the ones that they picked on there, like a lot closer. Like it wasn't because it was a very limited cast that they did because of COVID and everything. Um, uh-huh. so you got to like know them more and like, um, they, they just did some really inventive things because they were under such constraints that I really appreciated. And to be honest, like sometimes the Boulay brothers, um, just for me can get a little in their own heads. And this was like a chance to mm. let the cast really speak. Um, so I liked it. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause I, I really liked, um, the, I mean, the thing about the Dragula that's so cool is they elevate it every season because like i remember like just from season one to season two was a huge jump in oh, quality yeah. mm-hmm. like the exterminations and like the little uh horror uh vignettes before the show would start like was just oh, so yeah. cool yeah super elevated so yeah i was definitely gonna have i mean i you can't not watch the uh dragula or in the fall yeah exactly and the new season the new season i think is coming out in like mid-october so that should be fun yeah Oh my gosh, there's this one bitch on there that sh- she's going to be in my nightmares. I was a bit <laughs> scared. It was the one who um, had like the jagged vampire teeth, the vampire style teeth, and she had like the um, heads on her chest and it was like gooey and slimy. Oh yeah, I remember. I don't remember who, but I don't remember the name. Oh yeah. my gosh, terrifying, but also it's going to be so exciting to see. There was one yeah. challenge where they were, I don't know if you guys remember, but they were doing um, like piercings, like bat, like back piercings. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what? What is this show? <laughs> <laughs> that was season two, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. That was Extermination with Moniki and um, I forget. The there was two others, weren't tattoos, there? Tattoos, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, do you mean the one where they had to get a tattoo, uh, uh, like a tramp stamp? I think that, that that was in the same season, if I'm remembering right. I think that was the first season. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Maybe Any I'm of wrong. the like piercing type stuff, it makes my like skin crawl. I have to like brace myself or look away. <laughs> yeah. And it was funny we we asked them about that when we had them on the show because I thought that that was like really <laughs> it was really extreme for like this like I don't know drag you know I I don't and it was just so extreme when I was watching it. I was like I'd never seen anything yeah. like that. And they were like, well, to you, Andrew, that's strange. But to us, that's just what we do. And I was like, oh, we're dealing with some crazy <laughs> bitches over here. <laughs> well, how do you feel about the blood one? The blood extermination where they had to eat, like, jars of blood? <sighs> I don't know. It's, like, it's weird because um, I grew up, like, watching, like, oh, God, Fear Factor and, like, that kind of stuff. So yeah. okay. I thought that we were out of, like, the gross-out TV phase. But I feel like <laughs> the Boulay brothers are bringing it back. <laughs> no i would like to leave that in the past <laughs> yeah definitely yeah but um yeah definitely everyone go check out the dra- new season of dragula um you can go ahead and listen to the Boulay brothers podcast also on the uh, dread central network yes. um so definitely go listen to them if you're a fan and you want more like deep dive spend more time with um with those folks um, I do have to ask, I don't know if this, we can cut this out if you don't want it in the show, but have you heard about the, the controversial contestant on this season? No, I haven't. Who, who, who what is it? A bitter Betty. Mm. So what they do now. <laughs> so bitter Betty is a trans woman. And so you would think like, oh, she's like super woke and super like, what am I trying to say progressive. here? Progressive. Yeah. Progressive, progressive, right. In the know, connected. In the know. But she kind of falls more into the Buck Angel uh, realm of trans people oh, <laughs> where no. they're like, it's kind of like not accurate, like not PC or not like with the more modern times and things like huh. that. Mm-hmm. So there have been like lots of, uh, I, I, I'll DM you the screenshots that I have after oh, the, gosh. the podcast. But Yikes. yeah, um, 
I mean, think, like, it's like just sometimes after they cast these things, they're like, okay, now everybody stop doing anything. Because <laughs> yes, we don't. Right? right? <laughs> stop fucking up, everybody. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, I don't want to like, you know, dig too into it because people can change. Uh, people evolve, things like that. True. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but I know, I think Bitter Betty is like one of the more popular ones for this upcoming season. So. Huh. It'll be interesting uh, to see, but my uh, my bets are behind Hoso. Mm. Interesting. I will say I give the Boulay the Boulay brothers a lot of um, credit for casting some of these more people. Like they they did transgender before anybody else did. They did. Oh yeah. Like more um, contestants of color, more contestants that are not yeah. like rich already. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's I I really do appreciate that they kind of went above and beyond from the very beginning to cast like a very. Um, um, I don't know, well-rounded kind of uh, cast of characters. Yeah. And I'm very excited to see Bob as a guest on this season. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I mean by like being connected. Like they're very connected to their community. So in the end, they're able to produce a better product and really make people feel a part of what they're producing. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, to move away from Dragula, though, I just have to ask you one more drag question, and that is, are you excited for Drag Race UK Season 3? Yeah, that's f- Are they going to put it on somewhere where I can watch it? <laughs> uh, it it's possible. <laughs> I just Shade uh, rattle. Because <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, I'm not going to pay for WoW or whatever this, this, this thing is that I can only watch on my computer. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean I I yeah, that is the thing. If anybody from World of Wonder is listening, why have you not made a smart TV yeah. app? It's so exactly. frustrating. <laughs> well, yeah, that's we have a Roku thing. TV, so that's where we can watch ours, but not everyone has that kind of TV. Yeah, I don't. No. I'm not like fancy like you, Jamal. Oh no, that TV is not I wouldn't call it fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if Unless they Unless you want to sponsor us, Roku, yeah. then. <laughs> you know what? I'll I'll give them this. If they can like boot it into my Peloton, I'll watch it then, you know? Uh, <laughs> oh shit. Work. Could you imagine a drag race category? Yes. Drag race bike rides. That's amazing. I know someone's relaying that to RuPaul yes. right now. <laughs> You need to get in that but, Peloton um, studio, bitches. <laughs> yes. I'm going to send you my Peloton username. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did oh, you yeah. see that, um, this is a little off topic, but did you see that Cody Rigsby is going to be on Dancing with the Stars? <gasps> no, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, it's one of the one of the instructors on Peloton. It's like the, 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 yeah. the only oh. like gay one. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. They're really digging the season on Dancing with the Stars, yeah, right? I know. I saw that and I was like, Somebody's got a good agent. <laughs> <laughs> right. For real, right? That's wow. cool. That's cool. Just to just to throw this back at you a little bit, World of Wonder is only about five dollars a Listen. month, <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that I I wish that we could offer you a code to uh, be able to watch it, but they don't even let they don't even recognize us or acknowledge our presence. <laughs> so unfortunately, I can't do that for you. You know, this is the thing. And I'll go on my little rant for a second here because I just did kind of do the go same thing. It, but yeah. um, this is ridiculous. How many streaming services do we need? I understand that there are certain ones that like cater to like certain audiences. Like Shutter has, you know, all the horror. <laughs> they don't do anything but horror. So like that kind of makes sense. But then like we get, you know, Amazon and Amazon's got its own exclusive TV shows that if you don't have Amazon, you can't watch them. And then Apple TV and then, you know, Apple Plus mm-hmm. and HBO. And it's just like, well, I, I, I have so many I have oh, yeah. so many apps now that I can't even remember which shows are on which network. <laughs> oh yeah. We're like reviewing our like budget this weekend. It's funny like you bring that up because we've been saying that for a long time now. It's like, well, you might as well go back to cable where you're paying like this obscene amount of money because now you have a streaming service for everything. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous if you ask me. I think they crossed the line when they put Discovery Plus out there and I was like, listen, you're gonna put H G T V and all those on one network. I know. I was like, no shade, I'm not paying for that one. I will wait for the yeah. show, I guess. <laughs> Definitely, and uh, it's more specifically even with RuPaul's Drag Race because they went to like from um, oh my gosh, uh, what was the first one? Logo it wasn't Wow Logo. There we go. It went from Logo to VH1 mm-hmm. to almost to Showtime, but then they got a lot of backlash, so yeah. that it stayed on VH1, and then they went to Paramount Plus mm-hmm. for All Stars, and I think they're going. 
are they going back to VH1? I can't keep up. I can't though. either. I had no idea yeah. they were <laughs> leaving Paramount Plus. I had no idea. I think, I think this, uh, I think this UK season is on a. Well, UK will be on the sh- on the screens. I think the next season is on a different network. Interesting. Don't don't quote me. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I know that uh, Paramount Plus. I feel like that was like a whole thing that they were like, well, if we're going to launch Paramount Plus, we got to launch with something that will get people to come on and watch. And yeah. they tried it with like the challenge. Then they're like, nobody watches the challenge anymore. Oh um, my but also they have like shitty. Oh, gosh, you're going to get me real mad. Like they get all the shittiest people on the challenge now. They're like, oh, this random person from uh, Love Lines yeah. or, or <laughs> Stoney's, Hubaba, Stoney's you know, been like, keeping up with the challenge. It's like all stars. I'm like, who are you? How are you an all star? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then they were like, okay, but we're gonna do RuPaul, and I guarantee that was their money ticket for getting all those subscribers on Paramount Plus. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was really excited for the Real World reunion oh, yeah. uh, thing they had. Yeah, I watched yeah. that until I realized that like not over half of them hadn't changed in 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, Karen on there. She Yo. was something else. <laughs> something else. The Karen jumped out, honey. She ran away. I had fun with that. It was very crazy. I had fun with it though. Like it was fun to see all those guys. I was really, I was oh, really yeah. sad that Eric couldn't be there because it, he had COVID. But oh, that did suck. He was talking to them through a screen when he was able to hang out virtually. Yeah, yeah. And I, I always thought that I, I forget. I for, I'm for blanking on his name now, but the the like rocker guy, yeah. I always thought he was super hot. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I had the biggest. Oh you had the biggest crush on Eric when it was the first on. And then really? I would watch. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you remember this, but they, he had a spinoff called The Daily Grind, and it was like an exercise show. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it was. Yeah, we had the VHS. Yes. My mom bought it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You watch it real late yeah. at night when no yeah. one's around. I sure did. Um, and you're talking about Andrew, Seth. What? Was his name Andrew, the one with the long hair? I don't remember. I don't think so. It was kind of like a more unique name or something, maybe. Okay. I can't remember. But I still think he's kind of cute now, though. Even though he, ha- he has, like, he cut his hair, like, shorter. Uh, it's still kind of long, but it's gray. And it's like, I don't know. He's still, like, kind of cute. Like, I, I like his energy level. Yeah. I feel like they all aged day. really well. Like that M- that early mm-hmm. MTV movie, our money, they must have gotten a good uh, lotion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely good moisturizers. That's the benefit of being on season yeah. one, really. It's like you're they're always gonna everyone's always gonna remember season one. True. But um yes. Uh, I have a really controversial question for Ooh, you, Andrew. Yeah, for it. So uh, this might get you your, your podcast canceled. So if that happens, I'm apologizing <laughs> now. Listen, if we haven't gotten canceled at this point for what we talk for about, sure. I don't know what will. <laughs> Snaps on that. <laughs> um, so, so are you a fan of pumpkin spice? Huh. I, this is like one of those things um, when it comes around, I'll usually have like one and then I'm, I'm just like have the experience. It's the same thing with like peppermint mocha around Christmas time. Mm. Like I'll have that one, but like I'm I'm not like I said earlier, I'm just not a hater anymore. Like if you if that's what you like and that's what you enjoy, just like go for it, girl. Live your best life. But like for me, a lot of those drinks are just a little too sweet for me to like have like on an all the time basis. Um, Absolutely. So I just stick with my like little uh vanilla latte <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I always get them to put like a little bit less syrup in it so it's not so overwhelming. Yeah. 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 But even then, it's still kind of a little bit too sweet. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what I like. The, if we got one thing out of um, the COVID experience, at least like more brands like started to be a little bit more user friendly. Like, I love that Starbucks now you can go on the app, you can like select how many pumps of the flavor mm-hmm. you want, you can like really, really like do it your way. And then it's ready for you when you get there. It's like insane. Yeah. Like, why have we not done this before right it's so convenient yeah. i have to agree it probably helps them with yeah, staffing was, too because then they don't yeah, get like exactly. slammed all at once there was one though like so they in chicago we've kind of gone backwards like we're back to having to wear masks and everything but um there was one point where we were like okay it's over like everything's great and so we i went to a starbucks um and i had gotten so used to being like um you know coffee with you know two cream whatever two splenda and the girl looked at me and she goes the cream and sugar over there you have to do it yourself now oh yeah oh (laughs) shit oh miss thing i was like oh okay so (laughs) she's like it's over there (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. I think it just like I've fallen into like these conveniences that came out of the pandemic, like getting your groceries like um like delivered to you or like having them ready to like drop off like when you pull oh, up. Yeah. Like I'm just like this is I feel I feel rich now. <laughs> right? I know. I, I feel you. Like I feel I definitely moved into like the grocery delivery uh thing. Well partially because I don't have a car, so it's kind of like That's h- tough, cumbersome yeah. to like, you know, drag all your groceries home. But at the same time, it's just like, it makes me feel really bougie. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. The the condo that we just moved into, um, it has like, it has a gate for like the parking. Oh, Oh, yeah. And every time I, every time I hit that button, I'm like, oh, I'm so rich now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that is a perk, honey. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my god! Even though we like, even though uh, this is not a fancy condo whatsoever, it's actually, um, it's it's actually funny. It's a I don't know if I talked about this on our show or not, but it's a, a convent. It's an old nun convent. Oh, oh. interesting. Uh, so every, I'm just everyone keeps asking me like, so is it haunted? Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was thinking. I have we haven't had anything yet. Um, however, I do will say that like. Ever since we moved into this place, my, like, dreams have been super vivid and, like, I don't know if you guys have dreams like this, but, like, my dreams, like, even if I wake up, when I fall back asleep, I go right back into it. It's almost like a movie. So it's it's very they're very vivid and so some nights I'm like maybe I'll just have that one extra glass of wine so that I don't dream as much. <laughs> I have to say I've had that experience before, not consistently, but that has happened. Definitely, yeah. and it's the worst when you're stuck in there and it's like something really annoying. It's like usually yeah. like you're lost in a city or something like that, mm-hmm. and like that for me at least. And I'm like, okay, I get it, I'm lost. Like, damn, like let's just let this be over. <laughs> Mine are always, like, I'm trying to get something done or, like, trying to, like, get to a place. And there's just, like, always these, like, things that get in my way. Um, And then I don't know if you guys have ever, like, worked in the restaurant industry. But I worked in the restaurant industry for, like, a decade through college. And I still have dreams where, like, I serve tables and, like, I can't get to (laughs) enough tables and, like, that kind of stuff. I was in retail, but I always have this... um reoccurring dream where I'm like lost in the student union building at IU and it's dark and someone like reaches out of one of the hotel door rooms and that that section of the building they grab my wrist and I wake up like I have this dream oh my gosh. every once in a while <laughs> and it's happened for years I mean IU is kind of spooky in some places like in Oh yeah and I would study in that building all the time so I have no idea what that means Yeah or what's the What's the um? What's the, like that really common one that's by the union? I don't know. I was. I don't know why I can't think of it right now. Valentine. I'm, yeah, I think it's Valentine. I think that's the one. That was like the traumatic one when I was like going to class one day and someone had like jumped out of the building and oh fell falling onto like that little awning over the entrance way. Oh my gosh, that's definitely yeah. Valentine. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, that's haunted. the one thing that we do all have in common Ooh. is that um, my husband actually went to IU, so I've been down to IU quite a few times. So mm-hmm. nice. That is. Yeah, <laughs> we are all Hoosiers. Like, <laughs> yes. Did you go to IU, Andrew? No, I went to like a smaller liberal arts college in in Southwest Michigan. It's called Grand Valley State University. But um, okay, when I went there, it was probably like I don't know, I like probably like ten thousand kids, and now it's like thirty thousand. It's, it's a like, big oh, thing, wow. yeah. Because yeah. okay. <laughs> I know Maddie goes to or went to IU. Um, yeah. So we all have sort of like that little connection there. Believe me, yeah. I'm always surrounded by these damn IU people. <laughs> <laughs> And this is no different. <laughs> yeah. I can't even tell you how many times I've had to hear, hear that damn fight song. <laughs> oh, my god! I'm wearing my tuba sweatshirt right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I was going to ask you, for some reason, I thought you had, I didn't realize it was Michael that had gone to Indiana University. But um, I was wondering if you had ever gone to um, any of the, the, the gay bar there. It's called Uncle Elizabeth's. Yeah, we Ooh, yes. I, we went there when I first went down there. Is that the one? It's in like the double wide, right? <laughs> yes. It well, was. It, used, it was. It was. I didn't. I hadn't been there when it was in the double wide, but then it did move into like a strip mall sort of thing. Yeah, we. I've been to that one, and then the one that opened up recently, um, called the back, the back door. door. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love it because um, I see Trixie wearing the backdoor shirt a lot. Yeah. Shout out um, to Cam. We know somebody who bartends there. Fun. It's a it's a yeah. fun town. Like it's 
it's kind of like one of those places like you go there for like three days and that's all you need and then you got to go somewhere oh, else yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah absolutely stony and i like to roll in like no notice to anybody and we'll have like secret weekends we haven't done it in a while <laughs> but we'll get a hotel or stay near campus and have a cute weekend and go back home yeah, and it's like, yeah. A, and, it's, and because it's a college town, everything's cheap. So it's like, it's yes. nice to be able to like go down there and have like dollar beers, and you're like, oh, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> grab, yeah. grab your mother bears. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my I gosh. I love mother bears so much. <laughs> yes. Go to Why Nick's. do they not expand? I don't know. Well, I know that it's they. It's so upsetting. They, a new, new people bought it a couple years ago, and they like cleaned it up a little bit. Because, mm-hmm. girl, oh. if you went in there like 10 years there ago, five one. years ago, it was trash <laughs> but oh, it was yeah. a great but it was great time so it didn't matter yeah they fixed the one on campus and then there's one on the west side of bloomington now but the um og iu hoosiers they love going to the campus location of course when, oh yeah whenever we go down there that's always our first stop because we get um god what's the drink that they have there why am i blinking oh it's like the drink Do they that, have a special yeah it's like what the one they just like it's literally they just how it originated or how i was told the story oh, is that oh. at the end of every bottle they just kind of pour like the last bit of the liquor into like this giant vat oh, and then they yeah. mix it with the like hairy sour bear. the hairy bear yes thank yeah. you oh and then that's across the street yeah and then there's the hairy beaver it's a little less intense yeah yeah drink one of those on your first trip down there that'll set you right baby (laughs) yeah Yeah. i had a ritual i would have one of those before i would walk (laughs) over to the auditorium and see a show yeah (laughs) (laughs) or if you go to the upstairs and you get an amf there also pretty guaranteed to get you pretty wasted yeah (laughs) the only thing with that is that i've sworn off blue drinks in my 30s so (laughs) (laughs) it's probably a good yeah it is a bit hard I, I do remember going back to visit like somewhat recently and I was like, this is too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Um, <laughs> well, speaking of drinking, do you have any like drinks that you like to drink in the fall? Is there any sort of drink that you like specifically drink in the fall or you really just enjoy drinking more of in the fall? Mm, good question. Non-alcoholic. Non-alcoholic. I always love a cider. Oh, Apple yeah. Apple cider is like a treat like i don't know it's just one of those things that like fall comes around like i don't drink it at any it's like my mind forgets that it's an actual drink i can get it any <laughs> yeah, time anytime you want <laughs> but um alcoholic there's uh, there's this um winery up in michigan that i always get a case every year around halloween time it's called witch's brew Ooh. and it's kind of like just like a spiced like table wine but it's really good like if you kind of warm it up a little bit just so it's like a little above room temperature and it's like it's really soothing on like the like really cold nights and everything because like Chicago it gets pretty freaking cold at some points in, in the winter. So oh yeah, that case always gets <laughs> oh, me yeah. through the winter. <laughs> that sounds delicious. You had me at the name, but that sounds delightful. Yeah, for anyone that wants to check it out, I think it's na- the name of the thing. The place is called Lilanaw Cellars. Um, and I'm pretty sure that you can get it because I can get it down here. So I'm assuming at least you, Jamal, can get it um, shipped mm. if you want to try it. Nice. Yeah, we'll definitely probably try some. Yeah. Well, we love to make um, usually when it starts to get fall vibes in winter, I just switch to whiskey neats. And that's like my drink all season. Mm-hmm. But um, if we go to like a cabin or something, we will make apple pie shots. Mm-hmm. And Ooh. it's so good. You're usually just drinking it and sipping it, not in shots, but just in a glass. That's, that's like, <laughs> it's like so, I'm not to call you out because my family whole, does this whole thing, but like, that's so Midwestern of you, Jamal. <laughs> I know, right? Like, I know how it sounds, but you know what? It's Everclear. It's apple cider. It's um, boiled down with um, cinnamon sticks. And what else? There's apple something else too, but it's so good. You cannot taste the booze, which makes it dangerous. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. If it's truly Midwestern, there's probably like cut up pieces of apple in there. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. You now you're getting fancy. What are you talking about? (laughs) Oh yeah, and applesauce is involved. Applesauce is the last ingredient. (laughs) Oh, there you go. I do remember (laughs) we got married on a Friday the thirteenth in October. Um and so somebody did show up 
to our wedding with a giant thing, like a, I don't know what you call it, like a Tito's handle of <laughs> apple oh pie shots. And I was like, well, you can take the Midwestern out of the board. <laughs> you know, you know, it's good. It's so good. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I do have to recommend, I think I've maybe recommended it before, but um, apple cider with, oh, you know, it's one of those shitty vodka brands. I think it's called Pinnacle. I don't know if they still make it or not, Pinnacle? but they had Pinnacle. They have an atomic hot flavored vodka. Ooh. So yeah, if you're mixing it, like I feel like the, the quality of the vodka doesn't matter anymore. So yeah. Um, yeah, mix those two and it's really like spiced, like, and it still tastes like apples, apple spice, basically. That sounds really good. I remember Pinnacle came out. When they came out, they went crazy for a second there. They had like <laughs> yeah. Swedish fish, cotton candy, oh, like all I this stuff. I drew the line like... of bubble gum and cotton candy. I cannot. Yeah. Okay. No candy in my vodka. Yeah. This is definitely like in my um, in my younger days of, of yeah. uh, experimenting with flavored vodkas. They had yeah. Tootsie I Roll mean... flavor, some bullshit. Oh, God. I did make Skittles vodka one year for Pride. I don't oh know if you've gosh, ever tried yes. that. Oh, that's different. It, it, like, <laughs> it's where you just soak we, the Skittles in there, right? In a, in a yeah. plain vodka? But what we did is we separated them. So, like, each flavor was, like, a different color. Ooh. And, like, I think we I think we mixed it, like, Diet 7-Up or something. Like, and it was so delicious. But it was, like, one of the worst hangovers I've ever had. <laughs> How fun. Yes, girl. That's, a, that's definitely a good Pride Month activity. Yeah. I think get crafty with it you know i love arts and crafts especially if they give me a buzz yeah yeah well if you mix the colors right you could probably make like orange and brown shots with skittles (laughs) god damn it seth sorry this is why we can't have nice things everybody (laughs) oh my gosh um so of course you know we have to ask this is i mean this is friday the 13th Mm -hmm. do you have any favorite horror films that you would like to recommend to the listeners or or just ones that you like to traditionally watch so right around halloween i mean i feel like everyone says oh i gotta watch halloween but uh sure whatever but (laughs) um i i really adapted i really like the movie trick or treat that came out like 10 years ago or so Mm. for halloween time um of course like i'm i'm such a, a basic bitch i love watching hocus pocus every year i can't help yes, myself us too. <laughs> but like i think some of the ones that maybe i would recommend that have um either suffered from pandemic like all going under the radar or like haven't really like gotten some of the love that i think that they should mm-hmm. i wrote yeah. down i wrote down two for you guys so um the first one is called pie whack it have you heard of this movie mm-hmm. no um, so Pie Wacket is about like this mother daughter duo and they're kind of on the outs with each other. Like they're it's I think I if I remember right, I think the dad died or he's gone away or something. I don't remember. Okay. Um, but they go because it's too expensive to live in this city, they like move out to this cabin out in the woods and um I, I won't go too much into it, but there's something in the woods and it's Oh no. It's very I have found it really spooky. Like there's one set sequence in it that's really, really spooky and it has a very um crazy ending uh that i thought was really good and i don't really feel like anyone really talked about it when it came out so i would definitely recommend Uh, that okay um and then one that came out right as we all went into lockdown because i remember they were playing at like the um drive-ins i don't know if you guys have drive-ins where you're at but yeah we do in indie um it's called the wretched um oh wait that sounds familiar i think it's on hulu now so it should be pretty easy to watch but that one was great yeah we actually watched that i enjoyed that i and it was i i feel like it was a movie the reason why i listed it is because it did get me like it did surprise me like with one of the twists because like as a avid horror movie watcher like i tend to call out the twist before it gets revealed to me but like that one got me and i was like damn they, they did it <laughs> they got me <laughs> i felt the same way and i'm usually like so easy to please watching films so when things like that happen i'm just like so excited about it and at the end there's like oh wow yeah oh no they did not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i will say a special shout out to this movie malignant that just came out i was gonna ask because i th- this is m night Shyamalan, right no this is james wan or... james wan the oh, okay. like insidious guy uh why did i think that it was well now i want to watch it <laughs> i just don't like m night Shyamalan. yeah no he has that movie that just came out a couple weeks like what was it called old oh yeah i, I didn't, didn't watch see that it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the, the malignant trailer like 
I think we're just like getting old or something. Like it freaked Stoney and I out. We're like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have to watch that one with the lights on. We watched it on yeah. we watched it on Friday night. I I have to tell you, like, this was probably one of my favorite movie watching experiences I've had in a long time. Like it was just, just like I went into it like I did not watch a trailer. I did not know what it's about. I was just like, James Bond, sure, I'll give it a try. And it's on HBO. Uh, Max. It's on HBO Max. So I was like, I don't have to go anywhere. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and so um, I was actually like really tired because it's on Friday night and it was like long week at work. And I was like, well, yeah, we can turn it on. But I'm not. I, I told Michael, I was like, I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to be able to make it through the whole thing. So because it's like an hour. Right. It's like an hour and 50 minutes. So it's a little bit of a longer movie. Okay. And as soon as it's it two hour. Mark. Yeah. And as soon as it started and it got into it, I was like, oh, hell no. I am into this. Like, it was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I am in this to win this. Oh my gosh. Well, I have to I have to recommend kind of like an underrated horror movie to you that you may want to watch and maybe the listeners um because I thought this was really interesting because it's actually centered around a lesbian couple. Mm-hmm. So they are um going they're going to the uh, one girl's her parents like has a house in the woods, of course, as all movies start. Um <laughs> the, and this, this sounds like it's going to be um, a spoiler, but it's really not. The The girl whose house it is, her and her um, wife are going on a walk, and she fully pushes her wife off a cliff, just out of nowhere. What? Like this tall yeah. cliff, but she doesn't die. Oh, shit. So, you know, of course, that's where I'll leave it. You know, it's kind of like... Is she going to get away? Is she not going to get away? That sort of story. Yeah, that's mm. that's uh, what keeps you alive, right? Yes. Yeah, I love yeah, that movie. I, I like wh- when we oh, yeah. rent. We watched it for the show. I ended up just like buying it right after that because I was like, yeah, because I really? liked it that much. And a fun fact about that movie is that originally it was written for a male female um, pairing, and then Ooh. they decided at the last minute to switch it out to be a lesbian couple. Um, and so I think that that brings like a cute, like dynamic to the movie. And it also like, they don't really change the script all that much except for pronouns. Um, and so okay. it's kind of a unique thing that they're not really treating it like, oh, this is a lesbian couple. They have to wear flannel and they have to like, like <laughs> mm-hmm. this kind of music and they're just going to listen yeah. to Joni Mitchell the whole time <laughs> and stuff like that. It's They're not highlighting that fact about Yeah, them. it's just like another couple and this is like what they're going through and like this is what happens with them. So yeah, great recommendation. Love that movie. There were like, I, I mean, I, I'll go into more specifics with you when yeah. we're not in the podcast because of course i don't want to spoil spoil this for everybody um but uh but yeah there were a couple moments at then where i was just like why don't you just oh, yeah. kill her <laughs> i know exact i know exactly so, what you're talking about and if a uh, conversation about yeah. it, we talk about it on our show um i believe it was the like the pride up ep- actually i think it was the pride episode you guys were on if i'm remembering right yeah and it was it, oh it really was good, it was a good discussion but yeah i definitely had moments where i was like what are you doing, bitch? Like, get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Seth. I'm like, just slip yeah. the poison in the coffee. It's like that easy. Yeah. Well, I, I do have to admit yeah. that um, when I listen to your podcast, I don't always make it past the horror in real life. <laughs> because if it's, if it's not a movie yeah, I yeah, have yeah. not watched or I haven't watched yet, because you guys do, you know, go into spoilers and stuff like that, which is fine. No, totally but I just haven't it. watched the movie yet, so I don't want to get spoiled. So now I want to go back and listen to the rest of your episode. <laughs> no, it's and I totally understand that. And that's kind of why we divide our podcast the way we do is because some people do just want to come for like the conversation and like they're like, well, I haven't seen the movie, so I don't really want to hear about that. And, and that's like totally fine. I, I think that some people probably skip the horror in real life because they don't want to deal with it and they just want to talk about the movies. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was one time I listened through the uh, movie part where I hadn't seen it for The Ruins, and that made me want to actually go watch it, and I watched it, and it was really awesome. Yeah. I thought The Ruins... Um... That movie's I I think that movie's like really underrated if because I don't think people really talk about it anymore. That was one of those ones that I read the book before I saw the movie. So I think the first time I watched I was like, "How dare you? You changed this <laughs> and you changed that." You know how the us book people are. So. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. So those are some good horror films for you to look into. And just to kind of I guess wrap this little conversation up, I was wondering uh, you know, of course, we have to talk about food. You know, it has to happen. <laughs> it's getting to eating um, season. <laughs> I know. Everyone put your eating dress on. Yes, eating dress. 
Uh, so I was wondering if you had any like traditional fall foods or things you're looking forward to eating now that it's fall. Yeah, um, I love a squash moment. Um, so like oh, yeah. acorn squash is like probably my favorite. Um, but then also like uh, this is really strange and it's just like I think it's just from childhood. But like I can't go through fall without having at least like three green bean casseroles. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh we love and, a casserole and usually what i'll do is i'll like mix like um like ground turkey and like onions and stuff in it so like it more is like more mm. of a meal but um mm-hmm. it's just a comfort food for me and then obviously right around anything around thanksgiving of course is like that kind of stuff but i'm not a huge, I'm oh, not yeah. a huge desserts person so i don't eat a ton of like pie or anything like that i'm but... the same way i'm not a sweets person whoa <laughs> I wish I wasn't. <laughs> Believe that's me. What I like about the fall too. It's like the savory season. So, I mean, the desserts are there, of course, but I'm more into like, give me the meat pies. Like, I'm Sweeney Todd. Like, give me the meat pies. Yeah. Give me all the casseroles, the sides, all of the, all yeah. of that. Yeah. And well, the red kill wine. the bitch you hate at work. <laughs> make her into a pie. <laughs> we will, we will find our calories and carbs wherever we can get them. We don't need the sweets. Oh yeah. Bring on the potato salad. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah, I definitely have to have like a pumpkin pie, like just one during the fall. Usually I try and like uh, find like cause sometimes they'll sell it in like slices or like by the half mm-hmm. so usually i try to do that but if i can't find it in if it, if i have to buy the whole pie usually i try and like give it away <laughs> like mm-hmm. at least half give it away yeah, yeah because sure. i will eat it all i will say i do like those like si- apple cider donuts that you can get from like the like apple picking places and stuff that are like coated in like cinnamon Ooh. sugar like th- that's like i'll go there i can i can get on, the, on the board with those that sounds good that does sound really good. I've never. I don't think I've ever heard of that. I know like the apple fritter donut thing. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, all. Yeah, these know. are more like donut holes, or sometimes they'll do like full Ooh. full donuts of it. But it, you can get them. I mostly, love donut holes. Mostly you get them at like the apple picking places. I don't, do you guys have apple picking places? <laughs> we do in the area. We do around <laughs> Indy. Like you have to drive out a little bit, but not too far. Yeah, I'll sometimes go just for that. <laughs> <laughs> you're like i don't want to pick the apple no uh, i want to go to the store and buy them <laughs> yeah that's what or, we do or, or, or just buy them from uh maybe they'll have them already picked for you at the at the yeah, apple place yeah. or something i just think it's... i don't need the instagram picture <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's kind of I don't bullshit need the, like, you know the typical like apple picking i don't need to do that <laughs> yeah shade it's like girl it's yeah. an apple shade just eat sense. it <laughs> you know who you are <laughs> <laughs> it's all the gays just wait till halloween mm-hmm. time you're gonna see them all picking their pumpkin and their pumpkin patch mm-hmm. and their overalls <laughs> meanwhile meanwhile i'm just like buying mine from outside the grocery store <laughs> right i'm like girl that's too much i might be here oh, I, I don't really even carve uh pumpkins anymore we did last year because it was this. um pandemic and we were all stuck inside so it was like something to do but um yeah yeah usually we just forget <laughs> i'll sit a couple on the stoop (laughs) i uh, i think the last one i did i was i was trying to be fancy you know how like some people like they'll like carve um like you know more like minor scratches into it and make it look like a yeah painting or something oh yeah so i think the last one that i remember carving was that i did edward munch's um scream the scream (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it was not nearly as good as the original. <laughs> like, don't give yeah, me, you know, don't give me like that much props. But it did look really cool, and if I can find the picture, I will post it. But um, no, but yeah, I'm super that's... basic. You're getting the triangle eyes, and you're gonna hope for the best <laughs> with the mouth. Yeah, I am like not coordinated in any way, shape, or form. So anytime that I try to do, yeah. like, you're doing like the shaving thing. I always end up shaving it too deep, and then it just like pop- puts a hole in it. So I'm like. See, oh God. me too. And I'm always worried about hurting myself because I'm just that kid. I always yeah. get hurt. So <laughs> don't give me sharp things. <laughs> yes, girl. Oh, my gosh. Well, before we uh, totally get out of this, I was just wanting to throw this over to Andrew. Is there anything that you would like to promote? Uh, of course, your podcast. But if there's anything else you'd like to to let the listeners know about, that would be cool, too. Yeah. I mean, you can listen to Friday the 13th Horror Podcast pretty much anywhere now. I mean, we're on Spotify or everywhere. So you just have to search it, whatever your 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 choice of listening device is. Um, but, yeah, as Seth mentioned, we talk about horror in real life and we pair it with horror movies um because we really do feel like um horror is not just a, a a way to get out of what's going on in the world but actually a mirror that we hold up to ourselves 
Um, mm-hmm. So if that sounds interesting to you, give us a listen. Um, but obviously, uh, it's not for everybody because we do tend to talk about some sensitive topics sometimes. So Yes. And they do talk about horror in real life and the films through a queer perspective, which I enjoy. Yes. Because I think that's also part of what makes your podcast really special. Oh, thank you and so what's much. what's important, too, is that it's honest. So, uh, like, a lot of people can not take the heat. So, absolutely, get out the kitchen if that's you. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I appreciate the show and listen. Definitely. And, and if you're looking for them on Twitter, they'll be the ones with the verified check next to their names. Yes. <laughs> so, if you see any other Frygay 13s, that's the fake one. Yeah. The, the day that we start to get people trying to be us, that's going to be the day that I'm going to be like, okay, this is oh over. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we've made it. Yeah. <laughs> I I just have to ask, just for my own curiosity, what was it like when you, like, did you apply for this, this status or did it just come to you? And like, what was your reaction? So I remember I looked it up, like after we passed like 10,000 followers, I was like, you know what, maybe we will get it. I don't know. And then I looked it up and they were like, we're not accepting any uh applications at this time but check back and so i signed up for like the little um notice like when they're going to be doing it and um Uh i just i signed up as like an entertainment company i think is how we kind of did it because holy shit if you want to do it as like an as a quote-unquote influencer you have to like have a bajillion followers like they will not do anything with you oh yeah (laughs) so we signed up as sure because we actually are and uh i forget what we we didn't do an llc but we actually are like a company now um and so i think that that helped us because that we were able to like provide that language um but i Mm -hmm. remember maddie because he sleeps like never um (laughs) i woke up to i think a text from him saying that it had gone through and i was like oh my god (laughs) <laughs> we're verified were you like what celebrity am i gonna yeah. dm first <laughs> it, it was funny that have it was you, funny ha- though like some of the people that did start following us i was like oh this is like something i guess i don't know i i'm not a huge like i do run the social media for for i get for the most part um but like personally i don't really have like much social media i think i'm just on facebook because i was on facebook 15 years ago or whatever um and i don't want to like lose all the pictures and i also don't want to like go through downloading all of them (laughs) so uh but for the most part like i really social media as much as good as it does it does equally amount as as evil so like when we did get that verified thing i was like this is really cool and then i just started thinking to myself like what is this gonna do like who's gonna come for us now (laughs) like (laughs) right right well, it's probably easier to slip into people's DMs to invite them on the show. Yeah. That's probably yeah, a benefit. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's, Absolutely. It's funny, though, like, how many of these, like, celebrities, it's not them, you guys. Like, <laughs> just let you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, definitely not. It's yeah, their exactly. So, so sometimes we'll get, like, things back. But for the most part, we just get it. We get ignored just as much as probably everybody else does. <laughs> yeah. Clint Eastwood told me to get off his lawn one time on Twitter. That's amazing. Yeah. I congratulate you for that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was like, fuck you. (laughs) And I swore off Clint Eastwood forever, which was upsetting, but it had to be done. He's, uh, yeah, it's, um, ups- it's upsetting because his son is so hot. <laughs> oh, really? I'll have to do some research. <laughs> I I know about Arnold Schwarzenegger's son, but that's I think it. That's all. Yeah, I'm on. I will say, I will say for you guys, I do miss trade. I'm not oh, gonna no. lie. <laughs> I miss it sometimes too. Maybe that can be like a once a month thing. Like not every episode, but like once a month. Yeah. And I will say, Jamal, I was really jealous that you ran into Marky Miller. Because... Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was like a whole moment. I was like, that's, that can't be him. And Stoney's like, that's his dog. And I had a little moment. I couldn't be stalkerish though. I was too far away. If I were closer, I would have said something, you know, cute. You know how I am. Yeah. <laughs> nice ass, I used bro. To... I used to follow them when they were first in, um, in, uh, at IU. Yeah. And then I kind of lost track a little bit when they moved to LA because I was like, oh, now they're, they're, they're those gays, oh, you know, yeah. those West oh, Hollywood yeah. gays. I legit but like then, his like videography skills, but yeah. I was kind of like, oh no, they're out there. I felt that as well. <laughs> He's got a great eye and also like he does a really good job of like picking really unique music Mm -hmm. too. Yes. Um, so that's why I followed them for a long time. And then kind of once their relationship kind of dissolved and like he moved back and I was like, Oh, this seems, this seems like it's going to get into like the YouTube, um, rabbit hole of like, you know, you guys know, I mean, of all these like 
crazy people that are either hating one week yeah. or like, getting into these arguments on the next week. Yeah. And I'm just like, I have enough drama in my own life. I am not <laughs> accepting. I am not accepting of yours at this moment. Oh, I'm no. not. I'm not shopping for additional drama at this moment. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that they seem to be doing okay. I follow Ethan's channel separately too. So good for them. Yeah, I, I've always been more a fan of Ethan than Mark. Mark seems like more of like the bro douchey guy that's <laughs> yeah. like not my type. Um, but I like that's Ethan more because he's more like more like feminine um like you know accepted more of his feminine feminine side yeah so i think that's cool but he's also back in indiana now too yes oh really oh yeah he yeah you gotta get on grinder grinder you'll find it actually <laughs> i think he has an only fans too if you really go looking oh god oh. <laughs> yeah but uh um, oh. yeah i don't know i don't know how i know this it's uh, funny just because something like, i read in the news <laughs> mark, uh, mark really just reminds me of like pretty much all of the guys i went to high school with but like a nicer a nicer version of <laughs> but still like it, i definitely get what you're saying about it kind of like the bro like he definitely played football and like he probably had like a baseball scholarship or something <laughs> yeah 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 it's like you know like muscles are nice of course like i'm not gonna try and be like <laughs> oh yeah i don't like muscular guys and like i'm not gonna try and like you know be like that or whatever but um, some some of them just like really like it's just like when you're really like muscular and hot and you know you're hot like for me that's like a turn off because I'm just like yeah you have a great body but then and there's like no substance like, there that's so. like my yeah, rule of yeah. thumb with Instagram and stuff like that is like if all you have to offer me is your genetics like I, I'm not interested like <laughs> you have to like have some kind of angle I like that I like that. If all you yeah. have because, like, your they genetics. were born with these looks. Like it's not like they earned them or like worked for them unless they had like work done or whatever. But some of these people are just like, yeah, so, I, mean, and I say that all the time. Our genetics are like we eat a, a donut. You can be keto all year, every day. We eat a donut. Same girl, like, we same. swell up. Like these people are naturally skinny and they lift weights like everyone else, but it shows more because they don't have to cut. Or the these layers. gays that can eat McDonald's like every <laughs> single day and not gain a pound. And I'm, I haven't eaten fast food right? in like 15 years. <laughs> Do you know how much I miss the China buffet? Come on. <laughs> I'll never forget the first, one of the first times I went to a China buffet and I like, I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to make like a salad. And I thought I was putting honey mustard on my salad, but it was actually like the duck sauce. So I was like, my mouth. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> was it still good? No, my mouth, my mouth was like on fire. <laughs> <laughs> he got pranked. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that is so, so funny. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, I feel like we've had another lovely week here. At Thanks for coming. Of course, big, big thank you to Andrew, who came from Friday the 13th. Um, Maddie, uh, the, the invitation is always still welcome for you to come. And of course, to Andrew to come back. Yeah, hopefully I didn't uh, get us off topic too much today. <laughs> That's literally what our podcast is. Like, I, yeah, we get off topic all the time. It's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've just come to accept it. And it's like, at a certain point, if it needs to be steered back in the right direction, I just try and do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we do our best. <laughs> yeah, we did a good job today, though. But well, um, I really appreciate you guys having me on. It's uh, it, I know that we've followed each other and kind of been in each other's DMs and talking oh, and yeah. stuff for a long time. So it's really nice to be able to like actually see you and talk to you. Yeah, I have to agree. Yeah. We're real people. I know. I was so excited to talk to you guys, too. Make sure you all go check out their podcast, of course, if you're interested. Um, like I said, you know, if you're interested in uh, horror in real life, there's a section for that. And if you like horror movies, there's a section for that. Or you can just listen to the whole podcast, whichever you, yeah. <laughs> whichever you choose. You know, and it's funny. Just one last thing there is like. Even if the topic seems kind of taboo for you, it's probably taboo for us too. And a lot of the times when we're talking, like we're it learning works. about it at the same time that you are. So like we even yeah. sometimes get things wrong and like we have to kind of like check ourselves sometimes. So don't be afraid to like have tough conversations and don't be afraid to like shy away from like some of these things that really are going on in the world and are going to affect Maybe maybe not your life, but someone that you know's life mm -hmm. at, at mm -hmm. some point. So I think it's just really important that we talk about that stuff and like we get a better 
even if you don't agree, because a lot of times, even like on our show, even like we'll go into a topic sometimes not agreeing, but throughout the conversation, we get to a point where we can at least like understand where the other person comes from. And I think that that's something that we've really lost focus on in, in kind of how divided we are is we've lost the ability to listen and really like hear people out because like you said earlier, people can change. Um, yeah. but a lot of times it's exposure to these topics and exposure to like understanding where the other people come from that help people get to that next step. So not that you should go out there and talk to racists or whatever, racists or whatever, but like <laughs> give, give people the benefit of the doubt that they might not know any better, you know? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And and we try and do that a little bit on our show when it's appropriate. Like if there's like a, a pretty big like thing going on in the news or if, or we used to do a segment where we talked about gay news and stuff like that. So, yeah, we definitely like to talk about the issues here, too. So maybe that's why we connect so well <laughs> with yeah, our, exactly. our podcasts. <laughs> yeah, very cool. We uh, will be taking a break next week, so there will be no new podcast. But we are going to put out, I believe, our pumpkin spice review because, you know, we'll be doing that again in October. So this is just to tease you so you know what's coming. Yes, I'm so excited to share that. Um, Of course, those episodes are always really fun and we have fun plans for the new one this season. Yes. And then, of course, after that, we'll be right back into RuPaul's Drag Race with UK season three and then eventually Holland, Holland uh, season two recap, which... Yes. That's a whole other thing. I got really upset at the last episode, but we'll save Uh-oh. that. <laughs> we're an episode behind, but we're keeping up this time, kiddos. Woo, girl. When you see this new one, is it, yeah, pretty divisive. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, until then, bye. Bye. <laughs>